I know it has been some time. We have been busy, busy, busy here at Seagrass Stink. Uh, so we are going live today. We really just kind of want to introduce you to Habitatitude if you have not heard of that. So we're going to show off some great species, some things you may have uh, certainly seen in your pet store and may have unfortunately seen out in natural habitats. So we have a great way to kind of vet that out, places you can reach out for resources and obviously your local uh, retailer to help you rehome animals that you may not be able to care for any longer. Hello, thank you Lee, thank you for joining us. If you have questions, raise your hand, let us know. Yeah, that never works. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, Miss Fabulous Sandy Moore is here. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> hello Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Um, so, Habitatitude, I know we are you know, deeply invested in that. Yes. Sandy, you have known the history of this, so give our audience an idea a little bit about what Habitatitude is and where did it begin? Absolutely. So when I first got involved with PJAC, the Pet Industry Joint Advisory Council, as a board member, replacing Elwyn Segrist on the board representing aquatics in the United States, um, PJAC was involved in a collaborative uh, collaborative event to, to, to message out to, to retailers and to the home consumers, and they, they named it Habitatitude. Um, <laughs> right about not releasing your pets to the wild and so and that's what we want to talk about today everybody is aware of, of the current um, fiasco that we have got going on nationwide yes. <laughs> it with uh, with zebra mussels who were the you know hitchhikers into moss balls that were imported into the country from the Ukraine so we just want to talk about we want to talk about pet care overall and why why you shouldn't release your animals to the wild if Absolutely. they are not appropriate for you or if they outgrow your tank or whatever the case may be. Exactly. And things happen, life happens, upgrading, downgrade, we all understand that. And there are great resources to rehome those animals in the wild is just not a great way to do that. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to show off some goldfish, you know, feel free to ask questions. We can see that stream coming along. Um, so this may be a fish you are familiar with. There you go. We all know you love them. These big old chunky monkeys, the water <laughs> pigs of the universe. <laughs> so definitely one of our favorites here. And this is a fish that obviously is kind of the poster child for Habitatitude yeah. um, because they are so adaptable in so many different environments. Right. Um, so definitely they really this, are. <laughs> they so, really are. <laughs> so with, with goldfish, a couple different reasons why they're wild, why they uh, are released into the wild. One is, you know, if they if if your kid wins them at the carnival, I know I've won some, <laughs> right? Um, you know, and I was lucky enough to have parents who who supported my uh, need to have a lot of animals, right. but not everybody does. And right. so, you know, the and the kid might think, you know, I can't keep them. I don't know what to do with them. I'm just gonna go let them go in the pond where everything's gonna be okay. And everything's not okay in the pond. He's either the the goldfish <laughs> is gonna get predated upon. Somebody's gonna eat that fish, yep. or worse yet is that is that that fish could become established in the wild exactly. yeah. and if there's two right and they and they breed then they actually could potentially create an invasion of it definitely especially in the warmer states certainly here in florida you know a lot of the animals in the hobby are tropical so they are more adaptable some of the warmer states uh and obviously in the cooler water the fancy goldfish aren't as hardy as things like the koi and your your standard goldfish yeah. Uh, and they do require, you know, quite a bit larger system. So yeah. part of Habitatitude is researching your animals yes. uh, and knowing what they're going to need. And if you can't, you know, uh, afford to do that or you can't set that system up, hang on. <laughs> uh, work with some who can. You have, oh, we're working right now. What's that? <laughs> we're packing fish right now. I, yeah. <laughs> and it's, so, side note, it's super busy here. It is so busy. It's a great time to be in the live animal business because the COVID has created a, a desire for animals of all varieties across the country. So I'm just looking, I was just looking over here. Checking like, out oh, our... Hey, Parks, I say, our buyer is putting away fish. Check that and, out. And as I walk through the building, I see we have like 12 new people who are training. So it's kind of like an anthill going on right now, is. which is a lot of fun. Oh, I need some of those. Hang on, hang on. Sexy. Hang on here, Dave. All right, you got to tell us about. We're talking habitatitude, but tell us about these gorgeous cool. mollies you've got there. <laughs> oh my! Are you taking it away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah we just got a few native species in. Uh, we got uh, some chain pickerel. We got oh. uh, 
yeah, native mollies, dwarf sunfish, uh, some new... Actually, this, oh. is, this is perfect in regards to habitat is good. <laughs> good timing. Some really sweet males. Oh my goodness. So you can see the dimorphism. Oh, the wow. males have the uh, vertical, or the horizontal stripes. The females have the vertical. Look at those. So, I'm gonna really cool beautiful. Stuff. Yeah. We're going to get some good photos and take those bad boys home. <laughs> oh, banded sunfish. Oh, oh, yeah. Look at there. <laughs> look at there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, is there a So this is a perfect example of having <laughs> animals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Why this is the best job ever. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Oh, so Ryan from Zilla is watching. Thank you to hey, reach Ryan. out to your rescue groups. Uh, yeah. There's rescue groups, your local retailers, your local clubs, plenty right. of places. Uh, we'll also drop the Habitatitude link uh, after this chat so you guys can click on that and learn more about that. And it also offers right. some resources. So uh, what I neglected to say <laughs> right? when I got distracted by the squirrel <laughs> was that uh, Habitatitude was a collaborative effort between, between the industry, between mm -hmm. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, and between um, NOAA. Oh, actually yeah. and and we all worked together to create mm -hmm. the messaging to uh to put out posters That's printed nice. it on on shipping bags um so, <laughs> so it's been a successful venture so far as long as we can get the messaging out to the to the home hobbyist to not re to, to not release your uh animal to the wild absolutely Hello, Michael. That's awesome. Watch him from Sweden. Michael, so. hi, I <laughs> we miss know you. you. Oh, I miss him. <laughs> My sister is watching. You know all about this. You've heard me talk fish plenty of times throughout our life. Uh, so definitely. So um, Noah. So explain to our audience who Noah is, what they are to the industry. Okay, National Oceanic. There you go. <laughs> atmospheric, and and I can't remember. I'm terrible at acronyms. So ta-da. Um, <laughs> so they're an institute that works so, in the aquarium industry. So they work with the aquarium industry, and they're in charge of uh, of of open water so like mm -hmm. um of things that would happen in the ocean that yep. are that are still u.s territory ah. um so like when we talk about what's going to happen with coral yes noah would actually be in charge of what happens in the open water versus u.s fish and wildlife who's in charge of what happens on land and that's really a terrible way to explain it <laughs> but, but that's my uh that's the nutshell readers <laughs> digest condensers there you go <laughs> So feel free to check them out. Oh, we got David Zink on here. Hey, We're busy. David, thank hey David, you. nice to see you on here. <laughs> Terry, Allison, I know you've missed our videos. We've just been busy, busy, busy. Yep. All right. So let's go see some. We're gonna see flicos. So we do jewel cichlids. Oh, let's talk Ooh, about jewel, jewel fish. cichlids. All oh, yeah. right. So I know it's hot here in Florida. The condensation and just a little bit. Um, oh, We're next, oh, next, next aisle. aisle. <laughs> Hang on, guys. I'm not, I'm not trying to make you dizzy. I promise. Hello, Jackie from South Carolina. You're starting to warm up there. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so condensation again. I'm sorry, folks. Maybe I'll come to the side. All right. There we go. So jewel cichlids. So jewel cichlids are a riverine cichlid um, from Africa. And they are, in my opinion, not that I count, but the, the meanest fish <laughs> ounce for ounce of any fish that I've ever, that I've ever dealt with. And this fish, although Although the aquarium industry is blamed for an awful lot of uh, invasion events, this one is actually true. So this fish has become established in several um, bodies of water, uh, localized bodies of water in Florida, as a direct result of farming them in Florida. Um, and because of them, we have actually updated our rules for aquaculture so it can't happen again. So they have become established because they can they can compete with the native species. Yep. Yep, so, and that's one of the biggest issues we have right. in our world. So <laughs> where they are, they're landlocked and they're not gonna get out and get further. Mm -hmm. But this is a mean, nasty little <laughs> fish. And, and anybody who's ever kept them knows it's like they're a beautiful fish yeah. by themselves and they'll kill everything else <laughs> in the tank. Little monsters. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have jewel cichlids as they, they do uh, breed prolifically, that is a great fish. You know, you have a batch of babies. What do you do with those guys? You right. know, your clubs, your retailers, reach out to them. Uh, find other ways to get people into those fish so you're not ending up having to release those into the wild, which is exactly right. how we get fish put on the, uh, the blacklist. Yep. <laughs> All right. So we're going to actually head to one more row. Actually, a couple. We're gonna, all the people. We're going to take... Make way ahead of you. All right. Sandy's going right. <laughs> to... You're fine, huh? Sandy's going to plow the way here. So this is us walking through the building. We are busy, busy packing fish out. 
These are all headed to your local retailers. <laughs> this is just our, our normal day in the life here at Seagrest, getting fish out to you. So these fish will be packed uh, and off to stores near you within the next 24 hours. So four days a week, this is what we are doing. We absolutely love it. Oh, oh I know, snails. <laughs> Squirrel, there's so many shiny cool fish to show you. Yeah. All right. So now, this is definitely a fish that you are familiar with. Hello, Carrie, nice to see you there. <laughs> okay, so Tara Glickley's, Pocosmos, that's a catfish. Yes. What I know about these fish is that they were introduced in the three different waterways, three different river systems in Florida in the 1960s. And since that time, the guys that go out and collect alligator eggs for the alligator farmers also go out and collect Frico eggs that are found in the same cave in those in those uh, river systems, and they, they collect those egg masses and sell them to the industry. We as industry cast them out, <laughs> grow them out, and, and send them on to uh, to retail. I don't know of any farmer in the past 40 years that breeds <laughs> these fish on their farms because they erode the banks of the farms. Exactly. So this is definitely, I'd say, if the goldfish were not a poster child. <laughs> Hang on here. There we go. Uh -huh. <laughs> Packing fish. So this is definitely the other poster child for habitatitude because everybody, you know, needs a cleanup crew. Uh, and this fish is, you know, quite industrious. The challenge with this particular species is it does get fairly large and fairly large quickly. There you go. You can see these guys. There you go. Hi, buddies. So I'm going to stop their flow so you can see them. There you go. So most of you guys have seen these guys in the pet stores and your retailers. And most of you may have some or of this species or another in your aquariums. Um, and it may not be the, you know, the correct fish unless you've got a larger size tank, you know, 75 gallons on up. Long term is what these guys will need. But there's several other options, such as a bristlenose placostomus, uh, that are still very, very uh, industrious and will do a great job cleaning. So again, oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. It's a working facility, y'all. We've got fish to pack, so sorry about all that. But, yep. but they need to hear that information more than we need to talk about. Exactly. <laughs> so again, with this guy, this is a, another fish you should definitely research. I know this is something you see in most pet stores, and you know your local retailer can right. tell you more about them. Yeah. Um, but if you've got a big tank, a great fish for you. If not, there's definitely alternative options for a cleanup crew. Yeah, there are, there are so many options. There are so many <laughs> options. Please do not release this into your lakes and to your waterways. It's nope. not cool and it's not funny. Nope, definitely not. All right, so let's flip back. We know you want to see fish. We all know what you're here for. We have all the fish. <laughs> let's go look at some. So we're going to take you to the ever fun hallway because we got cool stuff in the hallway. Ooh. Ooh. Like those knife fish I saw. Oh, I know. <laughs> See, we're all just a big bunch of geeky hobbyists here. <laughs> no matter how long you're at seagrass Inc. or you know, what position you hold here, we generally are just a bunch of fish geeks. I know, I was gonna kind of slow down. Oh my goodness. Who's shiny? <laughs> so this is not what the episode is today, but man, we are excited. I know, but I love these little pinch head little cichlids. I love them like crazy. So we're gonna keep, oh my goodness, the bigger ones down here are just gorgeous. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> no, you're fine. I know. Look at these two pigeon bloods going at it. <laughs> Sorry guys, we just had to kind of show the, oh my goodness, look at them. There you go, hi buddies. <laughs> All right, I promise we'll get over to the hallway after I show you these, look at these chunky monkeys here. I'm not bringing you food, buddy, that's the lab's job. <laughs> All right, we're going. <laughs> and we're walking. And we're walking. All right, so you can hear us a little better back here. Excellent. So I wanted to bring you over, actually. Oh, look at those. Oh. <laughs> look at those. All right, yeah, that is Lox's Zonas. All right, so these are Lox's Zonas, Cory cats. Oh my goodness, look at these big, beautiful babies. Ooh, doggy. I was looking for a Cory cat to add to my 90. This may be the one I bring home. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Oh, those are gorgeous. So let's see, the ever wonderful hallway. Oh, stingrays. There they are. So this is exactly why I wanted to bring you back here. Yeah, this is, so I could talk about this 
right? Yes. So in Florida, um, we work with the uh, uh, Florida uh, Fish and, and Wildlife Conservation Commission, and they have, we worked with them about um, keeping fish in closed systems and having a, a, a restricted permit for them, a conditional species permit, CSP, which means if we pay for this permit and we are inspected on an, an at least an annual basis, we keep these fish in closed systems, we record everything about them, we're allowed to possess them, to ship them out of state to where they're, they're legal to, uh, to be shipped to. And this is certainly, you know, a fish that, if released, would become a nightmare in the Florida Everglades. Absolutely a nightmare. I can tell you from <laughs> personal experience, I am far more afraid of stingrays in the wild than I am of any, than any piranha or anything like that. <laughs> Absolutely so, agreed. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's best that, you know, we show up and we sit at the table and work through these things with our legislators instead of, instead of getting, you know, leg being legislated out of business or out of, out of relevance. Absolutely. And you can see we've got the tags on the tank. We've got, you know, restricted in Florida. Yeah. Um, but this is also something that, you know, in our system, our ordering system, you can't even put on the order. Right. Uh, because it'll be flagged as a red, uh, red skew. Yeah. So yeah. state by state, it's all regulated. Right. And this is, you know, this is the perfect example of why you should do your homework before you invest in the, in the purchase yes. of an animal. These are beautiful, wonderful, intelligent animals mm -hmm. who have very specialized care yeah. and, and have some really high maintenance needs. Definitely. So do your homework before you, before you make that purchase. Absolutely. Right. Should we show off the knives? I think we're gonna end on the oh, knives. Let's see them. All right. <laughs> so we just got these guys in. Check them They're out. So Look at them cute. hunting down. Look at all the black worms in with them. I know. So we have some false tiger knives here. I honestly don't know a ton about this species. He's actually hunting. You can see him kind of cruising around there looking for black worms. <laughs> they I were just know, chowing down. Don't hardly anything about about knife fish other I than really don't. Then we get a lot of uh, inquiries from laboratories because of their electrical organ that they share uh, with some with a few other species like like uh, elephant nose and dolphin mormorids. Absolutely. I know MSU has a quite a big lab that they do. Uh, they lit up our Christmas tree one year in Lansing. It was kind of neat. Yeah, yeah. Using That's the knives. Awesome. <laughs> well, I wish I could have seen that. That was neat. Mason, you're welcome. As soon as as soon as we're done with COVID, I can't wait to give tours again. I know. I miss seeing people. <laughs> it's definitely so. It's nice to be able to chat with you guys. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. I hope you kind of heard our message on the Habitatitude. We will drop a link down in our, our post below so you can click on that. Yep. Uh, or you can check out our previous post on the zebra mussels regarding how to take care of that. Uh, certainly, if you've encountered those moss balls that have those challenges, you know, you can follow the instructions to safely uh, evict those out of the aquarium yeah. uh, and take care of them. Definitely check out your state guidelines on what the best course of action is. Definitely. And we're working with, we're working both on the um, state and federal level as, as we receive additional information mm -hmm. on how to properly eradicate them from, from your home aquarium, we will continue to pass that information along. Absolutely. All right. It was great chatting with you guys. If you have further questions, feel free to put that on the chat and we will keep, uh, keep an eye out for your questions and answer them as we can. All right. Thanks, okay, you guys. Care. Bye.